hello cuties welcome back to another beautiful episode of my channel if you're new to my channel thank you for stopping by don't forget to subscribe to this channel right now subscribe to my channel turn your notification bell on to get notifications when i drop new videos if you're a returning subscriber thanks once again for coming back to my channel to watch this amazing content so guys today i want to talk about uterine fibroid what is uterine fibroid uterine fibroid is a non-cancerous growth that appears in the uterus during childbearing years another name for uterine fibroid is myoma so what is the size of this uterine fibroid it ranges in sizes from seedlings which could be undetectable to human eye to large bulky mass that can enlarge and distort the uterus so you could have a single fibroid or multiple fibroids in your uterus let's talk about the causes of uterine fibroid the first one is genetic uterine fibroid can actually be genetic the second one is hormones there are some hormones that can cause uterine fibroid such as the estrogen and the progesterone these are the female sex hormone and they actually promote the growth of this uterine fibroid in the uterus the third course is the ECM. What is ECM? ECM is actually what we call extracellular matrix. They are just like materials that help cells to adhere together. They help to bring cells together. And this ECM actually triggers the growth of this uterine fibroid. So these are the three major causes of uterine fibroids. So let's look at the signs and symptoms of uterine fibroids. Most women who have uterine fibroid don't usually experience any signs and symptoms. But for those who do, it depends on the size, the location, and the number of the fibroid. So the most common signs and symptoms include heavy menstrual bleeding, menstrual period that lasts for more than a week, there is pelvic pain, constipation, frequency in urination, difficulty emptying the bladder, and even back ache and leg aches. So these are the most common signs and symptoms that are noticed in women who have uterine fibroids. Let's look at the risk factors. The first one is risk. Our research has shown that uterine fibroids is more common in black women than other racial groups. We also have heredity, we have diet that is rich in red meat and lower in fruits and vegetables. Alcohol intake can also predispose one to having uterine fibroid and even smoking. Smoking can also predispose a woman to having uterine fibroid. The last one is early menstruation. So research has actually proven that these are the risk factors to uterine fibroid. That is to say that if you want to prevent uterine fibroid, you should try as much as possible to avoid these risk factors because some of these risk factors that I mentioned now are actually the ones you can actually take care of. You can control them, you can control your diet and you can avoid smoking and alcohol. Let's look at the classification of uterine fibroids. The first one is intramural. As the name implies, intramural fibroid is actually embedded in the muscular wall of the uterus. In this type, the uterine fibroid embeds in the muscular wall of the uterus. So the second one is submucosal. In submucosal, it penetrates inside the uterine cavity. This type bulges into the uterine cavity. I will have the subserous cell. In subserous cell, it projects outside the uterine cavity. The fourth one is pedunculated. In pedunculated fibroid, it is attached to the uterus by a stalk or a stem. This is a mushroom-like uterine fibroid. You look at it and you find out that it is attached to the uterus by a stalk or a stem. So these are the four major classifications. What are the complications of uterine fibroid? Although uterine fibroid aren't usually that dangerous, but it causes some discomfort and decrease in red blood cell, which leads to anemia and fatigue. So I hope you learned a lot from watching this video. I hope you now know the meaning of uterine fibroid, the signs and symptoms that you could experience and you know you are having uterine fibroid. 
I hope you've learned the risk factors most especially in order to prevent this uterine fibroid from occurring. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for taking your time to watch this video to the end. If you haven't subscribed till now, please do well to subscribe before leaving my channel. I'll see you again in my next video. Bye!